All right, so I am here today. I am going to do a bit of a gel press play. And for those of you who've never done this, this is a great way to start because it's gonna be some basic stuff. But I thought I'd pull out some of my supplies to let you know what you're gonna want to have out. Feel free to watch the video first. One of the things I recommend is I'm gonna do this in sections. So I'm gonna show you a technique and then I would recommend you watch the technique, then push pause and make a bunch of papers using that technique. And some of these techniques are going to build on each other. So that's kind of the way I've designed it. I'm probably, we'll see how many I do, but I, I'm going to try and keep it a bit limited. I want this to be a bit of a shorter video. So I'm going to say three. So some of the things I've pulled out, I've got these texture combs from, again, this is, this is pretty much sponsored by Gel Press. They sent me some great products to play with. So that's, I will say this is sponsored by them. So yeah, they're, they're texture combs, which are great. They're like a soft rubber. And so the idea is they won't damage the plates. I've got a brayer. I, I already have a few, but I, you know, this is, they, they sell a good brayer that it pop, the brayer itself pops off. So you can just stick this in water and clean it after you use it. And it just snaps back on. So that's nice and easy to use. Then I did grab some stencils. Most of the stencils here are the Crafters Workshop. And we recently, for Eileen Hull, did a collaboration with them. So I pulled out some of the stencils. I've used their stencils for years. They're great. I think most of these are still available on their site. I'm not sure every single one is a Crafters Workshop, but I'm pretty sure. If you can't find the exact same one, you can find something similar. They have so many stencils, so many stencils. Then I've got some gel plus. So these plates come in a variety of sizes and shapes, and I will link below for you so you can pick those up or if you need them, or if you already have one, feel free to bring, use what you have, and then you can expand if you want. But they've got some really neat shapes. So for example, this one is a puzzle shape, and I'm gonna use this today. And then they've got, like, this has a light bulb, a house, and a coffee cup. Very cool. They have round. I'll pull out the rectangular. I'm just going to do mine on a standard 8x10, which I love because it's the size of paper, practically. And then I think they also do have one that's the size of paper. They have so many sizes. They have a huge one that's, like, 12x12 12 12 or 11x14. Also, there's round ones, and um, this is a four inch round, so that's kind of fun. We're not really gonna get into using the shapes as much. This is a very cool one. This is called an impressible. This one was designed by Palettini. It's a designer series, but this is really cool because it's it's got a shape to it. So it's it's kind of like using a stencil, but different. And I will use this one today as well. So pull out what you have. The other thing we're gonna need is paper. So I've pulled out just a bunch of random paper. And one of the things I've got is some nice heavy card stock. That's always great. I like using cardstock when I'm doing two-sided things. So for example, if I want a page that's gonna flip. Then I've got two types of paper, just copy paper. This is one of the things I discovered recently, which is kind of cool. And I, I do have to credit Tim Holtz for this. He always talks about paper and what you do on paper makes a difference. So I've pulled out two different types of cardstock or just um, copy paper, like computer paper. But if you can see, one of them is much whiter than the other. And they're both 96 brightness. I didn't know that paper has a brightness, but they do. This one is a multi-purpose. And this one is designed for, it's also called all-purpose, I think, but it's white. And that's the big difference is the color. This one is a, a little bit lighter. Uh, than this one and I don't know what the weights are but you can feel so the idea being take different papers to see what different results you'll get I used to think it was the paint that you had to have a high quality paint to have a high vibrant print and I've recently realized it's the paper if you have a pure white paper that's a bright paper your paint will transfer on it 
and be more vibrant. So, and maybe I'll pull out some prints just to show you. So that's what I'm going to start with. I'm going to get my big gel press and I'll be right with you. You're also going to want some acrylic paint. And the acrylic paint that I like to use, this is just one of the paints that I like to use. But I have to say, this is one of my go-tos. And the reason is, A, it fits in this great basket. So I've got a ton. I can just grab the basket. But also, it's... It's just a good quality paint, but it's not super expensive. And But you'll see that I have others in here as well, because I also have the Amsterdam. But my favorite to use is the Liquitex Basics. I do print with Fresco Finish. I do print with Dina Wakely and Dilusions and a lot of different as well. I think cost though this is a great print pay, uh, paint if all you have is craft paint start with that craft paint's fine too i just like how the thickness of the liquitex but again i i have some studio pbo in here pbo i don't know how you pronounce it pbo i think and some amsterdam as i said and you might every now and then see a different different bottle some artist loft, that's that's also a good cheap paint to use because you're gonna use a lot of paint and that's why I like using a less expensive paint. All right, now I'm gonna get my brow press and we'll be right back. So here's my gel press and you can see just how dirty it is. I don't clean my gel press. I will show you why. Maybe we'll start with that is a wipe up print. I'll show you how you can clean it. There's a couple of ways, but I will show you my favorite way. I also did grab one of these. It's one of those paper folder type organizers. So if you don't, if you have limited space, this is a great way to put your gel prints so they can dry. And I just set that off to the side. Now, most of your prints will dry fairly quickly if you don't use too much paint. If you use a lot of paint, then it's going to take a longer time for them to dry. The other thing I like to do is have paper on the side, and this will be my wipe up. And in between prints, I will clean my brayer on here, but then I also create a background at the same time. So I'm sort of doing double duty. I've pulled out three colors of paint just to give you an idea. When I gel press, I don't pay a ton of attention unless I'm specifically doing something like a cover, I will pay attention. But most of the time I just slap paint down. But to give you success and to help you prevent mud, one of the ways to do that is to get colors that play nicely together. So like stick within the cool family or like, you know, you know that blue and yellow make green. So I know I'm pretty safe with a couple of blues and a yellow. The reason is when we're blending, these colors will overlap and you'll get a third color. Or in this case, I might get a different color because I'm using two different types of blue. And you'll see as we go along. But in order to get started, just get started. It's it, just slap paint around. That's one of the great things about gel press. There's really no rules and you will find your way as you go. So let's get started. I'll start with the cleanup print. And for that, I'm actually going to want a lighter color because the idea is I want to pull this paper up. So a lot of times I like to use like a dark titanium white is a good one or just something a little off color. And what this does, it'll make it look like it's book print, like old book print kind of thing. You'll see, it's kind of sketchy and fun. So I'm putting it on my plate and I do want a nice layer sort of this is also you'll see as you go but the thing about gel press is how much paint to put on you don't want to put too much on because then your print prints get too wet i'm going to make a nice coat and then i am going to wipe my brayer off and i will grab another piece of cardstock for this i'd like to use cardstock because you do want a stronger paper to pull up that old paint so if you have a dirty plate, this is just a great way to get rid of that paint that's already on there. Another way, if you want, you can also simply take a baby wipe. Uh, one of the really good things to use is antibacterial gel. Of course, these days we like to save that for the COVID and prevention of the COVID, but you can easily 
put um, some gel and a paper towel and that'll wrap it up. So you see, I've, I am using my hand just to press that firmly. And then what I'm gonna do is come along and just pull up a corner and see if we're pulling up some of that paint. Now I've, I still have some here where it didn't quite get enough. So I could put that down and try and get that to stay. The challenge is there's a trick between leaving it on too long where the paper gets stuck and leaving it on long enough where it pulls up most of that paint. So I'm sort of in between. See, the paper's getting stuck up here, but you know, here's the other thing. Look, I can just peel it off from that because that paint has just been put on there. So it is working. So this is good. I'm showing you how to and how to not. So this is what I end up with, this very cool sort of, I don't know, it gives me the old paper vibe. And here's where my paper stuck to my plate because I left it on too long. But that's cool too, because then I can come in with another color and just, <clears throat> or like a brown, a vintage photo, distress color and fill that in and it'll give it another layer of fun. And then, as I said, you can come back and just peel this paper up. I can wet it to pull that paper up as well, or I can just continue gel printing. You don't want to put anything, like I don't want to stick my nails into my plate. I don't want to, because I don't want that to, I don't want to damage my plate, but you can see here, the paint did its job. Oh, and that's kind of fun too. You could put that on a junk journal. That's a paint skin. So I can just pull that up. I usually will not do this. I will leave it and then inevitably it will end up on a print at some point. Step one, technique one. We're going to lay down some paint and we're just going to create some simple backgrounds so we can build on those backgrounds. So I've got, again, I've got a bunch of different paper. All right, so I'm pulling out just the copy paper to start with because my idea for this project is, and I will put the link below, is to create a journal. Let's see if I can show you it at the end. Because this is a collaboration between Eileen Hull and Gel Press. My project is going to be to take this full-size journal of Eileen Hull's that was cut from obviously a cereal box and I'm gonna turn that into a journal. I'll put the link to my blog that will have all the steps on how to make this. But for now, let's get the prints. So here's my two different types of paper. Here's the one that's whiter and here's the one that's more like a, of, I guess of an ivory color. And we're gonna try, I'm gonna try using both of these. So I'll start with the brighter whiter. The brighter white. So what I'm going to do is come along with my three colors. And you do, sometimes you get these, I call them paint boogers. I think a lot of people call them paint boogers. You just pull that out. But I'm going to come along and I'm going to put pea size-ish colors down. doesn't have to be it can be different you know depending on if your your paint's kind of full I'll stop clicking I'll just leave the lids open so it's not as annoying like a sound in the video so that's quite a lot of paint we'll see what happens then what I'll do is I'll take my brayer and I'm just going to smoosh it around until I get an even coat and again, I'm gonna come along here because I'm just creating that extra background. I'll take my paper. I'm gonna use the brighter white. And I'm going to do a light. Because I know I put a lot of paint down, I'm just gonna do a sort of very easy coat. Like that's a lot of paint for my first pull. So there, you do see there's some white spaces there. And then I'll come along with the second one. You, know, you can see I've pulled off some of the paint. And this one I can rub a little more firmly because I know that's a good, better 
sort of better amount of paint on there. So there you go. And this is what I've got. I've got just this nice starter background with, I've got basically got color. That's my goal is to just get color down. And if I don't like, if you don't like the blobs, but you won't see those, we're going to build on these. I like that. I think that looks cool. I still have a little bit of paint here, but I'm going to just leave it. So that's one way of doing it. I'm going to give you a couple of ways in order to get, again, get some backgrounds down. So using those same colors, and I'm going to put the yellow in the middle. And the reason for that is because I might pull up some green. I'll pull those prints back so you can see what I'm talking about. But I'm going to put a couple of dabs. And again, we're just making some, taking some paint and putting it onto the background. So I'm going to do that. And I've got... Can see just put dabs of paint along the edge and I dropped my paint and now I have paint on my carpet so that brings up a good point when you do this you want to do it somewhere where you're not going to get paint on a carpet because acrylic paint and carpets do not play nice so for example do it in your kitchen where you have linoleum or do it where you have like I have my chair is on a plastic mat, and then I have a welcome mat underneath my chair to give it some cushioning, and then that way. So I did make a bit of a mistake. The idea is you want to do the color brayer, do the color brayer off. So I didn't do that, but that's okay, because again, I'm making backgrounds. So I'm going to take... paper just gonna rub that on there and you see that's what I get now you can see where the green is coming in see here I have that blue and the blue together and I'm getting this darker green over here and sort of a brighter green very similar colors but still pretty cool and then I might get there might still a little bit of paint so we'll see if I can get another pull out of that Pressing a little bit harder to get that second pull up. And that, see, that's cool. I really like this. A lot of times I'll like the second print better, even though there's a lot of white space. As I said, this is a first layer. So now I'm going to pull these two. This was done with one paper. Let's see if there's a difference. And this was done, oh yeah, there's a difference. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. So this is a good way to show it because this had a lot of paint on it. So this here's the difference. You can really see, and I don't know if the camera will pick this up, but where I use the white versus the ivory, this is much more vibrant colors. And these are just a little bit muted, more muted. So I hope you can pick that up. For example, where you can really see it is if you just go where the straight up color is, this is sort of a dark, bit of a darker yellow, and this is a brighter yellow. And here's a good example. Here's sort of the same. Not a huge difference, but it, it, there's just an overall brightness to this print. And again, that's because it was on a whiter, whiter piece of paper versus a bit of an ivory. So if you're getting dark prints and you're like, I don't like my prints, but you find out you're using sort of a, you know, darker color to start with, that would be why. Now I'm going to leave this. I'm going to keep building on this one. So let's do that again, but we'll do it properly this time. So again, I'm going to take a few little blobs. I'm going to put the yellow in the middle. On the edge of the plate. And I probably went a little too close to the edge. You kind of want to do it more inward. Haha. -ha. Look what I've done. This is just a bleach container, empty bleach container that I hate. I'm like, there's got to be some use for these. So I cut one. I was going to put pens in it. But look, holds my paint up. Haha. -ha. Sorry, I digress. Okay, so now I'm going to do it properly. So I've come in and I'm going to pull that blue and then I'm going to wipe it off. 
Then I'm going to get that yellow. And I might get some of that bottom blue, but that's okay as well. And if I'm going along and I find I don't have enough color, I can just add some. There is a there is a bit of a drawing time, not a ton, but a little bit of drawing time. I'm going to wipe that off again. And there we go. Get more of that yellow going in between. So I've got the green stripe, but I definitely have the yellow, and that's what I'm looking for. And then I'll take that final blue, sort of moosh it up there. There we go. And I'm going to take the bright white paper. Oh, look what happened. I don't know what happened there. And again, I'm being a little fussy. Gel printing is not about being fussy. Gel printing is about slapping paint down. But you can also be fussy if you want. How's that? There we go. Look how pretty that is. Yeah, so I love that. So here I've got the blue, then a little bit more concentrate of blue where that kind of mess was. I've got some of the yellow, but it did mix in a little bit, and that's perfectly fine. And then I've got the darker blue with a darker that that other green or the, actually this is the lighter blue yeah but you get what i'm saying maybe i'll go with a very different blue to get it so you can really see the difference but that's a really good background so stop the video at this point and just make a bunch of backgrounds choose different colors just have a good old play with your gel plate and then i'll be back with step two but you do want to have some backgrounds made for step two Okie dokie, here we go. Here are the prints I made just from a very short, oh my gosh, like 30 minutes, I guess. This is one of the reasons why I love gel press. It's so easy and quick to get color down. Now, if your paper is curled, don't worry about it because paper does not have a memory and you can bend it flat you can put books on it you can iron it whatever you want to do but I thought I'd go through and show you some of what I came up with this these are the so this was one of the wipe ups the, the cardstock and what I'm going to do I'm just going to flip these and use them for the next session or the next section let me get all right too much stuff on the desk so all the card stocks, but that's a good, this one could stand to use a stripe here. So I'll put that there. Here was, I made that using a different, I said I was going to change my blue and I did. And that's kind of fun. I actually like the little white stripe there. And this was ones you saw, I think. So the ones I did want to point out, so here's an, a good example of one that ended up cleaning up some of my plate because like this, these were paint, old, old pieces of paint that got pulled up and it just looks really cool. Here was a different color combination I went with. And again, this was a fun example of what happens when you don't clean your plate. Here was the two colors I used. I used the purple and I just used the dark titanium. And that was my first pull, which was mainly the color I put in there. I did get a little bit of the orange. This was what had been left on my plate. And so what's really neat about this print, you can see all the different, like there's some purple from a previous pull and all the oranges. These to me are magical. It's just, you can't plan them. They just happen. And this was, you can tell, this is the print before the this print. And this is where it pulled up some of the orange. So that's fun as well. This one was a cool one. I did mainly just sort of a neon yellow. But I happened to have some of this color on my brayer. It was stuck on the edges of my brayer. And so I got these cool lines. And that's a neat print. Look at this one. This was picking up more of the color from the plate. Again, love that. This was this was the first one. Same thing. Some of the purple was on my brayer. And then, but look at that. Isn't that interesting that that's from the same 
pull paint, pull. Like this was the first pull where there was more paint, so it didn't clean up. And then this one created more of a cleanup where I got that really neat purple. What I love about this is it's a great way to have colors that would not normally coexist, like that will make mud. So like a purple and a lime green, for example, here's a way where you can put them together because the acrylic paint dries, it's opaque, and you just end up with that layer. So you get the idea. Here's another white part print. So any of the cardstock prints, what I'm going to do with those is keep them to be, um, you know, uh, more background, more background paint on those. Yeah, you'll end up with two prints that are very similar, sort of have the similar background as opposed to, you know what, I'll use, I'll use the back of these for this. So if you have cardstock that you want to be two-sided, what you can do is pull that out for this part. And obviously you still need some wipe off cardstock. So I'll have that as well. Oh, I don't know if this color. It's really, really dark here today. It's snowing. We have snow for the first time this year. And so I apologize if the lighting's not great, but I do, you know, it's the best I have right now because it's so dark in my room and not my entire house right now. It's just really dark because it's snowing like mad. So get some more paper. And this time what we're gonna do is grab some stencils. Now, what I want to do, we're gonna do some practices first. So it doesn't matter what colors you start with. And then I will explain what we're gonna do. We're gonna pull out and start building on the backs of these, but pull out some stencils and maybe different color paint just to give yourself a little refresher as you see I only use like three two or three color palettes and we'll do the next technique here we go I've pulled out a couple of colors I have a neon yellow and a navy blue I thought that might be a fun combination to start with and some stencils and I'm just gonna start by putting my stencil down now there's a zillion different ways you can use stencils this just happens to be one of my favorite the reason being, the, the cool thing about the gel plate is it creates, it adheres the stencil to it. So one of the challenges, as all of you that have done this with paint and stencils, is getting a crisp image. And the reason why I just love the gel press for this, if I were to do this with, say, paint and a spongy or dabber, it would take so much time. But with the gel press, it's like that. And, and, and again, it's just a great way to create backgrounds, to add stencil images. And so what I'm going to do is put a little bit of my two colors. And I am going to mix, you know, do it so that they mix and match. I'm interesting, interested to see because we do know that blue and yellow make green. So theoretically, I should get a cool third color. With this, I'm going to smoosh the paint a bit again, like I'm rubbing it into that stencil. And the only thing, I kind of blended a little too much, I think, but we'll see. I might have... I've got too much of the green going, so... Another way to do it is to do it again by sections where I'm not blending the paint and I would have ended up with more of the blue and, and yellow separated instead of so much green. It's all a learning process, even when you've done this a zillion times, because it just is. Let me pull out let me just take another piece of paper so there's a couple of ways to do this i'll start with my favorite way i like to pull the stencil and then give it a spritz of water because there's a lot of paint on the stencil that i can pull off i don't really clean my stencils but this is a good way to sort of get some of that extra paint off i've already brayered the extra paint from this and I'm just gonna take my brayer and brayer over my stencil. And what'll happen is the paint 
that was on my stencil will give me a neat image. And it's like, it ends up being a bit like a ghost print. And I, I still do have quite a bit of paint on here. Let's see if I can get another one. And I can come back on top of this one. I don't think I will get much, but you never know. I might get a shadow. And the, the shadow prints are called ghost prints. So I did get a little bit. If you don't like your stencils looking like this, you can have a tub of water and just pop your stencils into the tub of water. I don't mind. Because acrylic paint dries permanent, I, can, I just leave it on my stencil. It's not going to transfer when I use my stencils later. So now I have this paint and I'm just pulling up a print that has a little bit of color on it, not too much. And a light pull. Now you see the magic. How fun is that? Because if I were to do that just with paint and a foam or a brush, it would have I wouldn't get that crisp image. I it would have taken me so much longer than boof a few seconds in order to do that. And that is what is so cool about gel plus. Or one of the things. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna pull another print that doesn't have very much going on. Now, I'm not going to demonstrate this because this is mainly just a couple of easy techniques. But if I were to have this, oh, see that? That's so pretty. If I were to, and, and now this is the negative of the stencil. You can see that. So I've, I've more used my stencil as a mask in this scenario. But I've still pill, pulled up some old paint. So it's, it's just got, I just love this. There is a lot of white space on this. I'm not a big fan of white space. You might be. I'm not going to demonstrate this, but one of the things you can do afterwards is come in with an ink-based product, like a Distress Spray, just and spray a third color or fourth color and just with a wet paintbrush to turn the to sort of stain the white. You could use Seth Apter Ice for this. There's all kinds of products you can use, but if you don't want that to stay white, like I wouldn't keep that white and I can still build on that so maybe we'll do that to show you but I still do have a bit of paint on here but I'm going to leave that because that will be pulled up in a future print potentially so that is one way of using your stencil the second way so we put the stencil down first and then the paint so this time what I'm going to do is the opposite I'm going to put the paint down first and then the stencil and I'll show you a couple of ways to do that and I'm just going to stick with the same color but this time I'm going to keep my colors a little more separated let's see how that goes yeah it's snowing like crazy here it's our first snow of the year doing this in January and we I mean that's typical for this area to get we don't get a ton of snow but it's nice when we, so it's nice when we do I am a Canadian I spent my life in Canada and I'll tell you what I do not miss that extreme snow weather so I'm brayering off because I do want to keep those colors a little bit separate. And so one of the things that you'll come across that I'm coming across right now is the yellow neon is a lighter paint. It just, it's thinner and it doesn't spread as nicely as the so I'm using two different brands. I've got the Amsterdam and the Artist Loft. Artist Loft is a cheaper paint and so you can see it doesn't it doesn't play as well but it still works it still creates an interesting texture interesting however I had to use more paint to sort of get more to get some coverage so now I have this I'm going to put my stencil down and again it's going to be the same principle that that stencil is going to stick don't even need to do that because it'll just happen. I'm going to pull out another 
print. I said I was going to do this on white, but I'm like, why don't we just go for it? So what I want to do is pull out a print that has a different color background. For example, and that's where it gets tricksy because if you use this, that's why you need to have different colors to play with. So how about this? This could be crazy. We'll see. And I'm just going to put that down. And with this technique, I have to really rub to get that paint pulled up. Especially if I, because I've used a stencil that kind of has smaller openings. So this isn't going to be really crisp. You can see my paper's kind of bouncing up and down. And that's okay. It's just a different technique. Each of these techniques has their own value and their own way of doing things. But... That's why I would use paper for this technique as opposed to cardstock because you want to push into this. One of the types of paper that works beautifully for this technique is deli paper. Maybe I'll pull some of that as well. So here you see I got somewhat of an image. It didn't completely clean up, but that's okay. I'm going to pull out some deli paper. So here's deli paper, sandwich paper. You can buy it from a lot of the sort of the warehouse stores like Costco, BJ's, in boxes. It's not expensive overly. Or you can buy, you can also take wax paper, parchment paper. Deli paper just picks up the paint nicely. And you can already see, because it's a thinner paper, you could even use vellum for this. Because acrylic paint is permanent and dries permanent, it will dry on these papers. But you can already see how it's thinner and it's going to pick up more. And we'll do another print. We'll do a, just a deli print with this. Now the only challenge is, as I'm doing this, my paint is drying on my plate. So I've probably spent too much time, again, for the purpose of the video, but that's okay. If my paint is completely dry, I can just do a wipe up print. You get the idea. And that creates a little bit of a pattern. We'll come back and do more on that for sure. What I love about the deli paper, when you put it on your art journal or whatever, it's translucent. So there's a lot of interesting techniques you can do with that. Again, I'm going to spritz this a little. There's probably not much paint on here, but you never know. Maybe I'll get some. Now, normally when I do this and I'm in a session and I'm not videotaping, I move faster. And you will learn that as you gel plate and get experience that you end up just going from one to the other. So that's actually pretty good. I got a nice bit of an image on there. So that's cool. All right. And then I can pull this print. So again, the other thing that tends to happen is you end up with papers everywhere, stacks and stacks of papers. So one of the things I could have done, there's a good one, that's one of those background paint papers, is, and what I usually do is sort my papers into piles, and I'll show you. This is going to end up being more like three techniques, but really 20. Aha, you see, now we're getting cool. The image is a bit wiggly higgly higgly wiggly because my stencil I must have moved it at some point but still that's pretty cool now it's starting to get muddy by muddy I mean it's starting to get dark you can see that the colors if I put another layer of color on here it might not hold it might not work so this one to me is finished all I, but I can add accents and I will, that'll be technique number three. So I still have stuff on there, but I'm going to leave that and it might pull up with another print. That is technique number two. What I want you to do now is just carry on. I, I was going to show you how I separate my prints. Let me do that and then you can carry on. So what I usually do is I look through my prints and I separate them into categories. So for example, this needs a lot on it, but I am just going to flip that. I can use that as a background page for now. This needs stenciling. So it's it means I pretty much have the color in the background the way I like it, unless I went in with a stain or an ink. 
but it just needs stenciling. Same with this. This one, the background's done. So I go through and I pull the ones that are background finish and I put those in a pile. This needs more. I'm going to actually use that as a wipe up because I can come along and do a different color and wipe up from the top and maybe the edges. This is the same thing. This needs more. This needs more background. So that's the second, second pile. This one, pretty much a finished background. And what this does is it just helps me to be able to pull, grab the right, the right pile and, and be able to move faster. And I'll just go through again and I'll, I'll say, okay, this one's pretty much finished. Uh, I'm just going to speed this part up so you can see me separating the rest of the pages. Let's quickly do that. If I was gonna do more backgrounds, what I could come, actually with this one, this one's pretty much done because I would go in with a stain. It's more if there's a, like this one. So what I might come in with this is I could either just do the stencil or I could take my paper when my plate has paint on it and just put it down and do like that and pull up. So you get that idea. So I'll do one more stencil just to give you an idea of what we're doing. Let me move these aside so I only have the, these are my brayered ones that I'm going to go. And I'm looking at my colors and I'm trying to think of what colors I could do to, from these stenciled images. So for example, me, now at this point of the game, what I can do is be a little more specific. I can pull out this color palette and say, oh, okay, what do I want on top of this color palette? And again, you don't have to. But this is some, this is the way I feel like working today. Tomorrow, maybe I'll be like, oh, I don't really want to be so precise and just have at it. I think what I'm going to do is add a little bit of brown to that. I don't know why. And maybe some of that titanium. No, I've got the titanium. So I'm going to add a little bit of brown and color. I don't know why. I love, I love purple and green. And purple and green 100% make mud. But I think that would be fun, potentially. And these, I don't know, I guess they would just make some more mud as well. So I'll try and keep those a little bit separated when I do this. And through the magic of video, the lids are popped. So you don't have to listen to it. So I'm going to do the same thing where I come in and I keep the colors a little bit separated. And probably what might be easier is if I were to just start with one color. Let's try this. I did put too much paint on. But that's all right. Now you can see here, one of the fun things too, is I'm picking up a bit of that stencil design. So I do end up with a little bit of fun there. This paint's wet, a little more wet, so I'm not going to put my other piece of paper on top. I'm gonna to use a little bit less paint here. And now I also need to get Um, a wipe up sheet. What I'll do with this one is I'll use that, I'll use a deli paper to give you that idea. Sort of makes a fun puke color. <laughs> Isn't that lovely? Oh, that's kind of fun. Got a pattern on that. All right. Now let me grab a piece of that deli paper to give you that idea. Where did it go? Grab the same piece of deli paper. And I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to do this faster to show you what I mean. You can really a background pretty darn quickly. That's pretty cool. Like that. 
I can come back in on top of some of that color. Too. So again, I'm going to pull my stencil up, spritz with a bit of water. My water bottle's almost empty. And put that down. Quickly do this because my paint is drying. I can leave that stencil there for a hot minute. And then come in with one of those. Actually, I'm going to pull the one that had some purple. So I like the idea of the purple and the green. Now, this has a lot of negative space. So you can see what's happened. I really covered up that background because I have a lot of this. It, it's a lot of coverage. If I, I probably would have been better off using this part of the stencil because then more of my background color would have come through but I still like that the colors are a bit eh. what I can do is come back on top with some white to kind of brighten it up again it depends on what your color palette is and then maybe I'll just take a plain piece of paper to pick this up as now I know that oh yeah that's got a lot of sort of painted space and that's a pretty cool print. So many cool colors. So you get the idea. Pull out some stencils. Play. Get some of these images on some white paper. Get some of the images on some of your pre-done background papers. And we will be back with the third technique. What I thought I'd do is just keep on going and then maybe fast forward this bit to show you, for those of you who like to follow along and want to see more examples of how to do this next step. So one of the things I did was I went through and I changed, I took all my papers that just need stenciling. They all, the backgrounds are done, but I put them in a color family, sort of my blues and greens together, orange, yellow more yellow and green with no blue Actually, probably go on this one and that just helps me so now I can quickly grab knowing that well I don't really want to put any more green on this one and what I'll do is I'll just work on a couple of these and maybe I'll fast forward it so you can see my process for that so at this point I'm pulling out my sort of yellows and purples and I'm coming in with some other colors and one of the things to get pop of color is always to take a hot and then add a cool i tend to mix my hot and cools as you can see here because one would argue well i guess yellow is a, a warm but it can kind of go both ways uh, especially these are definitely cooler colors right like cool is the ocean warm is the sun so yellow's probably considered a warm i'm no expert in this stuff but what I've done is I've picked a couple of colors and then I kind of like, even though this is a similar for this one, I wouldn't work well on this, obviously. I like it. The other thing I've done is grabbed a metallic. So it's always fun at this point to add in some metallics. It's always fun to add metallics at any point, but especially if you want a touch of metallic. So I'm just going to, again, I've got my stencil down already and I'm just going to add full size and then we will go to the next step. So here you can see I am doing the same thing where I'm just adding spots of the color to my, on top of my stencil. I did put a blob of paint, so I ended up using my finger to rub it in, which was kind of fun. I'd never used a finger to <laughs> rub the paint in. I kind of liked the way it turned out. And then I'm pulling the print. This video is getting really long, so I am going to switch it up and do a part two but I do have one more tip for you. So one of the things that's happening is this is moving around. Normally I would just put my plate on a surface that it would stick to, but for the purpose of the video, I wanted it to be on white paper just so you don't see the distraction of the mat showing through. So all I'm gonna do is take some tape directly on my mat and then that will stick that paper down so it'll stop moving because the gel, the plate's not going to move. It's on paper. It's good to go. So I am getting quite messy though. Look at that print. Oh, that would make a lovely tattoo, wouldn't it? Yeah, gotta love it. 
brilliant. So I will be back with a part two for this video and we will just carry on with technique number three and getting more of our prints finished. See you in a bit.